And normally this is where I would say we are live, but we just aren't. Uh, if you are, if you are expecting us, we apologize. Uh, we are in the middle of a a copyright claim. We had uh, on Thursday's video titled "The Lost City of Z." Um, it was the true story of the Lost City of Z, but a studio company in England, because they had a movie that came out with the similar title, uh, struck the video, claiming that we infringed on their copyright, even though nothing about the video was about their movie. Um, so we are dealing with that. We cannot stream live until that's taken care of. Hopefully that will be soon. And uh, I want to say a quick thank you to uh, everyone on Twitter. Uh, we counted there have been at least 6,000 tweets to Studio Canal in the past two days from you guys. So um, we are greatly appreciative of that and your support um, during this time. But um, enough with the bad news. Let's get on with some good news. We have a fantastic treat for you guys today. and. Uh, that would be Mercedes. Is it uh, Carrera? Did I say that right? Uh, yeah. Mercedes Carrera. Excellent. Very well, Spanish, you, we, Kyle. Muy bien. Yeah, I, I was trying to get the. I was trying to get the. He practiced that for down. like four hours this morning, by the way. <laughs> the mirror. Carrera. It was good. I like it. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Uh, well, usually, we we have uh, in our. You can see it on your screen now, but we have a. This is our standard layout, and I figured I would do something fun and um, just festive for today. So, Dave, let's get more into a, a porn star vibe. Wow, chicka, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is so Kyle. Uh, yeah. so Kyle. I thought it, I thought it was fitting. Uh, I've, I've been wanting to pull out the pink and for a long time. Uh, pink is my favorite color, so uh, this is an appropriate, appropriate That's time. why it's so you. Um, I love so, it. yeah, let's – Let's uh, let's dive right in. Tell us a little bit about you, um, who you are, what you do, and then we'll, we'll kind of dive into how you uh, started out in the uh, adult film industry and, and go from there. So take it away. All right. All right. Um, well, uh, thanks for having me on. Um, where do I start? Okay. Uh, well, most people on the internet who are not porn fans probably know me from being involved in Gamergate. I was very heavily involved in that. Uh, my background, I was a commercial print model in my teens, and then I ended up going to school for engineering. Uh, my father had been a hydraulics engineer. He was U.S. Army and then civilian contractor. Um, I worked in aerospace for about five or six years in telecom for an additional, I think, three. Uh, my background was in industrial engineering, although I ended up working mechanical. Uh, in, in aerospace, I worked mostly environmental tests for, like, uh, uh, space-based optics, so basically cameras, mm -hmm. lower. Th um, so we did a lot of environmental tests, stuff like that. So that's kind of usually when people talk to me, what they're interested in. Like, why would you go from from that? Yeah, to I love those topics. I mean, I, we can sit here and talk about engineering for the rest of the show. Don't worry about anything yeah, else. That's, yeah, that's cool. that's his thing. He, he's totally. huge into that. Oh, like we're vibing then, because I. So you'll. Oh, they're there. I'm right there with you. Perfect. Yeah. I was a, I was a machinist. I was literally an engineer machinist with the Navy nuclear division. So yeah, I'm oh, right there with you. Oh, fantastic. Thanks for your service too, man. I like, Thanks. I love the Navy. Yeah. Um, then you'll totally get, I actually worked on a lot of joint Naval, uh, defense stuff. Uh, I worked for a very large aerospace company that uh, starts with an R. <laughs> if you know anything about I, I do. I, I, yeah, I think I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. 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 yeah so, uh, I worked on environmental tests for, uh, optical systems most of most of what we did was uh, environmental test uh for thermal cycling so a lot of the optics we we're using we're using uh mirrors i guess you could say made of beryllium and other materials so we were looking for variances in how refractive they were or mm -hmm. uh, and just the components like i did tribology for a while which is the study of ball, ball bearings so i like, took ball bearings apart i've, I've had together. a work with many a ball bearing in the navy i assure you um Steve but you your, uh, yeah i'm, I'm having right an orgasm right now this is like having <laughs> uh, it's funny you mentioned brilliant because i just had a, a show last night where a, a friend of mine had actually had told me he was taking an engineering test and he put every answer huh. as beryllium and, and basically his instructor was so thought it was so funny for some reason actually passed him on the test but for, for now we say that beryllium <laughs> is the answer to everything beryllium is, a, is yeah. a very interesting well um it actually is highly highly toxic so outside of any laboratory that they use beryllium and like especially some of the optical lenses we were using were probably about three feet in diameter so these are fairly large payloads um 
but they they have fantastic uh i guess you would say refractive capacities which is why we would use them for optics uh but when you shave it it's a lot like asbestos and it will get in your lungs and it can kill you so you have to be very careful i'm sure you know as a machinist well and also uh, i will be in the nuclear field beryllium is actually used as a reflector too for certain things like rocket engines are used nuclear propulsion they have to have these beryllium things that actually move with a boron and they actually will reflect neutrons and that'll cause the the rockets to actually uh have higher thermal energy so i i'm with you i get i get you i got it everybody's like we brought on right mercedes there. to talk about <laughs> rockets and nuclear if, uh, fission this is awesome i, I am i am yeah. i am fast uh like fascinated though how do you go from 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 that type of career into the uh adult uh industry well so my my background's weird because i grew up in la more or less even though my dad would go on projects so we didn't have like at edwards air force base and stuff like that for a while a couple of years at a time but um Growing up in LA, I was scouted as a model when I was a teenager. So I did that for, I think, like four or five years. And then when I went to college, I was, I honestly didn't really care for the fashion modeling world. Um, it It's not interesting. I mean, you're wearing clothing. <laughs> like, it's a big fucking deal. So I <laughs> uh, college and I, and I went to Cal State. And so I grew up, my father was a savant, a literal savant when it came to um, mechanics. He actually worked on, uh, he worked for SpaceX. Uh, before he passed and he worked on the they created a hydraulic actuator system so you know like when you take the rockets out you wheel them out and then they have to go 90 degrees yeah. and then you have to go with the clamping, mm -hmm. clamping mechanisms on them right so when it launches those things have to time within something like a hundredth of a second in order for the, the thing to launch correctly so my dad worked on that because they had a mechanized system and then they went to hydraulic actuators because my father was a genius with stuff like that so um i grew up around a wow. i grew up in in garages and I, my we didn't have any boys in the family so i knew how to do all that shit, and i liked it i like building stuff um so i went to school and i worked at several large corporations and that w it was soul sucking enough that what happened was i ended up working in production for av I, and i got i got caught in a bad time too you know there was mm -hmm. a weight crash that really i think a lot of it was timing like if i had been born 20 years before, I probably would have been very happy working at like JPL my whole life or something, you know, but, um, yeah, the rounds of layoffs. And so I ended up working in uh, TV production behind the scenes. And actually my, my boss in telecom, uh, did websites for adult industry people. So I, he, I actually had a server rack that I did technical training for telco and, um, he used one of the servers in my server rack to host all that shit in exchange for me getting, <laughs> See now she's oh. talking my language. Oh lord, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, you're you're, you're already favorite. Of God, by the way, if you, if you didn't know, that's our producer With Dave. That? We just call him that the voice, the disembodied voice, is the voice of God. We call him. That's David. Yeah. yeah. God. Hello, God. Producer. Hello, Mercedes. <laughs> so I did. So what happened was actually like it was kind of a long progression because you know it's like you're talking 15, 20 years or something. Um, but by the time I got. I was doing that and I knew a bunch of people in adult and they were like, why don't you perform? You, you would be good at this. And I had actually escorted pay through call pay for college. So, mm. yeah. So that kind of, it all just kind of went together. And I, I did a couple porn scenes. I thought, well, this is really easy money. So, you know, I'll yeah. do a couple of these. I'll, I, I paid off like the rest of my student loan debt and stuff with it. And then I didn't expect to keep doing it. And somehow I'm, I've been in, I think almost five years now. And, um, and I'm busier than ever. So it's just a weird, it's an anomaly. I have no idea how it is. Busy's good. Busy's good. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I've, I have researched some of your work this week uh, to make sure that we, we could all be acquainted and, and know what we're, we're talking about. And I must say that you are, you chose the right path. I will, I will tell you that. I didn't um, see him at all this weekend, by the way. He just said, I'm going to be busy for like next two days, Steve. Just don't well, contact me. What? And I'll tell you, That's I'll tell you what, um, I'll tell you what. Uh, what's the the coolest thing? Um, I'm actually I'm actually gay, and she actually did a a really hot scene with uh, two men in a, uh, yeah. a bisexual. Um, it was fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, um, I, I think you, I saw somebody uh, tweet on that. They actually got upset. They actually said something along the lines of, "Why did you ruin a good scene with two men?" And your response was great. <laughs> your response was fantastic. Oh, yeah. I was like, <laughs> that was brilliant. She's like, she's like, well, don't fucking watch it. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was weird, weird. say those things. 
It's no, it's true. And I mean, I, like he he does have a point because there was there was a moment where I was like I was ornamental. I was basically like a dog in a purse. I was completely unnecessary. <laughs> I, I I you know what I didn't do that much research on that particular episode. I, I, I will say, I will say that you were necessary. It was it was great. Uh, uh, but you know, but but this is a uh, this is why it's cool to have you on because uh, the uh, the way that you just kind of made that introduction and told us what you uh, like your experience before you started doing um, porn and uh, like your, your vast level of knowledge, I think goes a long way to kind of kill the stereotypes people have, because for some reason people think that if you're a porn star, then you're ditzy and you know, you, you don't like, you know what I mean? Well, there's that whole stereotype. And that's why we wanted to kind of bring um, uh, you on to kind of, go through that like do you get a lot of that when you're uh if, when you're meeting people and they ask what you do and uh, that sort of thing um you know I, I gotta be honest like i i'm kind of an introvert <laughs> outside of my work stuff and like online i don't really meet a lot of people and be like hi i'm a porn star because you know it's actually we don't i don't think we say that um i don't think that society is cool with that so and also i just don't know where i'd, I'd meet people i don't really tell uh people what i do unless they know what I do. Um, yeah. So I think that there's, there's a stereotype and, and I don't know that it's incorrect. I think that in the past, especially uh, when you had a different society where there was a different level of opportunity for different kinds of work. Like I said, if I had been born 20 years prior, I probably would have worked at like Boeing my whole life and, and it would have been fine. But when you work so hard at school and you, and you, want a career that you have some control over uh sometimes it's it's very challenging and i like i said i got caught up in a, a weird time because in 08 they were just laying people off left and right so uh that scared me being a fairly young engineer at the time and thinking sure. well, what am i going to do because especially the skills that i had i mean doing cryogenic uh thermal cycling environmental testing for uh, space-based you know optical systems i mean like who like there's three companies that do that so if you get laid off in one you got you gotta hope the other right. two are hiring you know what i mean yeah. uh so that was that. and that's the reason i'll uh, i think that there's a general perception because i think that the industry creates it too because the perception is that you have to be fucked up to do porn and and don't get me wrong i'm totally fucked up but you know in order to, to do what <laughs> like we're not i mean so have you we. seen our show so i mean we. literally <laughs> Yeah. You're, you're in good company. We, we actually have the company. audience for the fact that we are fucked up people. So, but in yeah. a good way, we're fine. I mean, in good company. I mean, it is. It, it's true. But I think that there's kind of a. It's a smart. It's actually a smart business decision if you can do it. Uh, it's. I have Asperger's, uh, or I was diagnosed with it, I guess. So, my experience in the industry is not the same as a lot of the girls. Like, like I heard you guys talking a little earlier, but there's a, there's kind of a real victim mentality happening even amongst a lot of the the women in the world that are you know, female performers and stuff like that. So, uh, and I don't ascribe to that. To me, this was like this, I like fucking, I like having sex with people. So if people want to pay me to do that, then that's fucking You're also finding empowering. I mean, I mean, you, you, do, are you empowered by it? Cause I mean, there is obviously some people that might be, uh, have the victim mentality, but you seem to be very alpha, very, you know, um, empowered by all this. Yeah. Well, I think, I think porn either, it either makes you or breaks you. And I think that's true of a lot of entertainment. Um, anything where you're, you, you guys know you're public facing right so it either inspires you to become better and you become a better version of yourself or you say i can't do this and then you, you collapse and i think that you know probably 80 percent of the world is in the latter category so if you look at the the data you would say oh my god porn ruins 80 percent of women yeah but what about the 20 percent who are, are doing fucking fantastic you know so, so that kind of that Pareto chart and I'll, you know and also because the the perception of pornography is hey you have to it's like the last chance before working at you know whatever so some you know low tier shit like a lot of the girls come in and they don't appreciate it or take advantage of it i see that a lot with the way um people treat their fans like i i really like when when you know uh shows like yourselves and people who are public facing appreciate the people who engage with them i think that's important and so yeah. porn has not they have not gotten I don't know if they've they understand the new world economies. There's some really great people, and then there's a lot of shit. So it's kind of it, it's kind of like yeah. And, and I think it 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 too. You know, uh, the society expects women to be who are fucked up to go into porn. So that women who are fucked up show up in porn, and then they fail out, 
and they don't know why. Most of the people who are very successful in the adult business are pretty together. Yeah, it, and and to me, I never understand uh, the the negative connotation that is put on, um, especially women who are in porn, because porn is something you know people might not like to admit it, but most people watch porn in some capacity. I would say, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I can't say that everybody watches porn, but at least at some point, a lot of people watch porn. So it's something that everybody does, you know, at to some degree. I think I think what it is, and especially right now, you have a very, um, I think it, like Nietzsche would call it like a, a slave morality kind of mentality happening. You have a very feminine model of the world. Well, you see, you see this right now, like in the, the last political cycle, right? And it was all about Hillary Clinton didn't get elected because she has a vagina and the world's misogynistic and blah, blah, blah. So when you have a society that's very female led like this and you have women who are really um, sexually not competitive because they're postmenopausal or they're sterile or whatever, making policy decisions and making cultural decisions, you actually start to see pornography uh, portrayed in a in a less um, favorable light. And that's you, you. The only people who really oppose pornography, like on a top level, are the extreme religious groups or mm -hmm. women's groups. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Bobby had the I like I like the fact that you. I like the fact mm -hmm. you leverage it to your advantage. I mean, it, on your social media, you, you you platform yourself and position yourself to be available to your fans and people that actually like having conversations with you. Um, I think that's mm -hmm. a huge testimony to how you use the adult industry to your advantage and not let them use you. So um, I, I've seen it. I right. mean, that's one of the reasons I recommended you. I was like, this is somebody who's got their shit together um, that knows how to use the media and actually seems to really care about their fans and wants to have conversations and, and, and engages with them. And I was very impressed by that, to be honest with you. I think you, you were the only you were the only adult star that I even followed until like recently, only because I tagged a couple of the people. But really, it was just you, to be honest with you. It, I've, yeah, well, I think that's, you know, I think when anytime you're doing anything that's facing for uh, media facing in the world, same with you guys, uh, people, you, you don't always realize how important what you're doing is to some people. Like, like you mm -hmm. guys realize it this week you're off when you're not on live, people are like, wait a second. Like they, they have a ritual that they, they spend time with. Yeah. You. They go through the withdrawals. Yeah. I literally just got somebody posted on my Facebook right now. They're going through non sequitur withdrawals and we've only been off air for that's two days. Point. Yeah, it, and that's exactly it. And I think that, you know, it's it's remembering how important your impact can be in the world. Um, I think in porn in general, especially in the past, there's kind of this mentality of, you know, we don't matter or the, it's that victim mentality thing, right? But I, I get these amazing emails uh, from people all over the world, a lot of military, a lot of military, uh, because I'm very active in the community, and realizing how like these people have been spending time with videos that I'll make custom videos for people and they'll watch every day when they're deployed. So, you know, whatever. So it, I care about the people who, who follow my work. It's why I'm allowed, I, I can do what I do and I'm grateful for it. But also uh, I think it matters. And I think we need to, all of us in the world need to be in a conversation that like what we're doing matters and impacts other people, whether we realize it or not. And Absolutely. there's not a lot of personal, there's not like in society right now it's just like i still see a lot of fighting about an election that happened two years ago like when are we going to mm. fucking grow up as a group that's, a good point. that's done that's over that's so point. like guess what but he's the president for the next two fucking years so how do you want to play this you want to position yourself so that in the future the people that you want get in or do you want to bitch and whine and piss and moan and think that somehow it's going to change the past yeah. speaking uh, of you, you got to look forward of, right? not past <laughs> Speaking of that, um, yeah. let me ask you just uh, as a side note, um, would $150,000 be enough for you, for Trump? Well, I, you know, honestly, look, and I don't know Stormy personally. I don't, I, I don't know that I personally would ethically take hush money anyway to begin with. You know, I mean, look, it, I don't know what her relationship with how it was based, whether it was transactional sure. or not. But what I do know is that if in that kind of work and men provide some sort of transactional system for them there's some sort of asset that changes hands the, then the presumption would be that that transaction is closed right like in any other contract there's an offer mm -hmm. right. you know it, it, and it's accepted it's, and yeah. the, the deal's done so, so you know to renege on it's that it's a fulfilled contract ethically, mm -hmm. right 
So, and, and, and then not only was it fulfilled, but then it was fulfilled again for an additional 150,000, right? So now that one was re reneged on as well. Um, do I particularly like Trump? I, you know, I, I'm really kind of indifferent when it comes to politicians. Uh, I think that sure. Joe Mattis is a very important piece of that administration. And if he's dismissed, that will absolutely change my perception of that administration. Um, but uh, I, I'm not sure exactly what Stormy is after. I know that they're trying to leverage, you know, an inquest into Trump's finances. And that's a very interesting. I, it, look, I mean, I I don't about history. Lots of news as a way to men down. That's the greatest men are the ones who are a lot. That's why a lot of times you see like a gay men in charge of things because there's no way to honeypot them. Yep. So that's a good point. That's a very good point. Um, so I, I wanted to kind of go through the uh, a little bit. And I know that I saw that online you're really big into net neutrality. And so I want to talk a little bit in here in just a second about um, net neutrality. But um, to kind of kind of answer some of the questions like I think that most people have about the, the porn industry and um, just kind of how things go. How many times like either uh, – a month or how, how often are you filming and how do you select like who you're going to do a scene with or how does that process go? Well, um, I, I work a lot. So I work probably about anywhere from 10 to 20 days a month, which is a lot for a performer because most performers probably work one to two days a week. So maybe eight times a month. I think one of the top agents says his goal is to have all his girls work 12 days a month. I often work okay. more than that. You know, I'm lucky because like there's like three Latina milfs in the whole industry, <laughs> and we're all spread out. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a is it a is it a niche thing? Is that it, what it is? It, a little it, niche that you have going on? It, yeah, and then you know because the industry is all it's pretty much all uh, site SEO. Like that's like every porn scene. That's what you will see them now. Interracial stepmoms, cuckold, t t babysitting teens with braces. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm guilty of all of those. <laughs> like check, 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 check. You know, so um, so that's kind of. I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, so that's kind of you know the, that's kind of the the deal in the industry. I fit a lot of those check marks, so I work more. Whereas like some girl who's like very young or she's like really really got a really specific look, where she's very ethnically one way or the other, like then they work less. So I, yeah. I have all the. Where I get to be in the movies for white with the white girls and then the Latin ones. And, you know, Excellent. They made a lot. Of, you they, fly, do you have to? Do you have to fly to various studios for that? Or what's that? Not old enough to be a milk yet, are you? Oh, uh, I am. Well, I think I'm, I, I'm thirty. Oh, you yeah, look thirty five. Nine. Thirty. Yeah, I'm, I'm thirty five. I'll be thirty six. Uh, this year. It's hard to believe that's this. It's hard, it's hard to believe that's considered to be a milf in the first place. But uh, you know, thirty-five looks like a baby to me. <laughs> You're a kid. I think that you know they're going for like the oh, it's your it's your friend who was you know his mom was sixteen when she had him. You know, it's like that kind of the hot yeah. mom thing. That's I got you. But, but do you have? To, I mean, do you fly to various studios for this? I mean, how do they get everybody like together? Do you like to do a shoot? Obviously, if people live in different uh, locations and stuff like that. Yeah, most of it's in LA. So like LA, Miami, and Vegas all have kind of their own industries. Vegas is very fetish uh, culture heavy. Uh, Miami has a lot of like the new girls. For some reason, that's where all the new girl talent seems to come through. And then LA is kind of the core industry that's like more corporate. And then Montreal is a big corporate office, one of the big companies. Um, but for the most part, most of the shooting's done in LA. There's like ten shoot houses that everybody uses that we've all we've all shot in a million times. And then with partners, sometimes they let us pick. So like that one by scene that you saw with uh, D. Arclight and uh, Sergeant mm -hmm. Miles, uh, I I actually chose them because they they came to me and a lot of the girls don't do by scenes. There's unfortunately a lot of stigma still about uh, what they call crossover performers, which are performers who do who are male who do both uh, gay and straight scenes or work with mm -hmm. transsexuals. Um, and I most of that is based on ignorance and their misunderstanding. There's back in the '90s, people were afraid of HIV. And the testing protocol sure. they used was the ELISA test. That took three months for HIV to show up. And by the time you tested positive on the test, you could have spread it to other people, right? So so there was a lot of concern about mixing those two communities. Now with the microRNA test, uh, it picks up the virus before it's transmittable or transmissible. So mm -hmm. before the viral load is high. 
you can get HIV and have it for like something like four weeks and not have a high enough viral load to transmit it to other people. So, but we're looking for that marker. We find it as soon as it's in the bloodstream. So that's why we haven't had an onset transmission in like 12 years. Uh, but like the bi scenes, for example, uh, I chose them because I don't do a lot of bi scenes, but I do do them because I will work with anyone I feel like working with and I don't give a fuck right. what their you know, perception is. Um, cause Good I know what the science is. Yeah. So, I mean, like when I started working with a lot of the transsexual women about two, those three years ago, they said, you're going to get blacklisted. No one will work with you again after you work with them. And I said, you can go fuck yourselves. So I did it anyway. <laughs> I did a, a Good for you. Big movie. Yeah, it was a great, it was a great film because it was about a um, woman named River Stark. Who, this is her real life story. She's a combat vet who transitioned after she came back from like her third tour in Afghanistan. Um, and all of the things that happened because she'd been married and had kids. This was a fucking big deal. And so I played the wife and it was a very heavy film and it didn't win any awards. I, I think it should have won something, but it was so heavy that I think people didn't know what to do with it. Uh, but it was, a, it was great. And it actually, ever since then, now other, these other girls who are big names are now working with the transsexual performers. So I think that that kind of, cause I, cause I don't, I'm not going to get blacklisted for that. Like there's two other Latin yeah. girls blacklist me. It's not gonna you're, stupid. You're, uh, Queen B. <laughs> um, like just, for me, uh, some of my um, like some of my, uh, I'll go ahead and put this out there. Um, I love I love buy scenes, and some of my favorite um, male porn, porn stars are crossovers um, that, that do huh? uh, that do both. So um, I'm a huge fan. Yeah. You should do more. You should definitely do more. I I love it. I think the production. See, now you're talking his language. I don't know the name of a single one of them. So now you're in Kyle's territory. <laughs> <laughs> He's with you. He's That's right there good. with you on this. Yeah. I feel reviving. There's exactly. Crossover performers. I think that performers should be. See, here's the thing. I live in a world where, as if you're a performer, your job is to channel a variety of experiences for other people to relate to. That's what we're doing. Like, so if whenever I deal with the performers, like, no, I won't work with this group of people. I'm like, well, then you're going to do shit everywhere because you're not expanded enough into it to, to be able to say, Hey, this is what I do. And, and I understand people's boundaries and stuff like that, but it's the judgment. Yeah. Oh, higher disease risk. I'm like, no, there's not. And actually anytime, anytime I've gotten like chlamydia three times in the industry and every single time it was cause some girl went out to some fucking EDC type party and had like a train run on her and then shows up to work three days later. And I have chlamydia. Those I'm more worried about those girls, male uh, crossover performers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Um, it, it, what do you, it, when you're doing a scene, how much of it is like, um, I'm trying to think of how to how to word this. How much is it is like actual enjoyment, and how much is it is, you know, that that edit that exaggeration, um, exactly. kind of thing? Because it, it I'm glad you didn't ask any of my ex girlfriends that question, Kyle. <laughs> we already know the answer to that, Steve. <laughs> yeah, we already know the answer to that one. Trust me. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> well, it's well, a lot of times it's the production studio. So like sometimes. It's how they film. So, like, let's say, like, browsers, like, they want, they cut a lot and they want really specific shots and really specific positions. And so, you don't, you can't get into a flow because it's really directed the whole time. And, and, and like, depending on your tenure as a performer, like, I'm at a point where they pretty much let me run my own show. Like, the most directors stay the fuck out of my way. I'm like, this is what we're mm -hmm. doing. This is how we're going to. Because, you, you know, I fucked on a kitchen counter fucking 30 times in my life now for porn scenes. So I know how to do it. This is how it's going to be done. Um, <laughs> but some scripts, I mean, they've got like some corporate head in Montreal. It's like, I want this exact fucking shot. And so we've got to do those things. So I think a lot of times, you know, when people say, oh, well, porn's you know, authentic. I'm like, well, the way they're filming it lends to that. But then you get some other scenes where it's totally authentic, totally go time. And actually that buy scene, what I loved about that is because I got to choose my talent because they came to me and they said, hey, Mercedes, what do you do? And I work with those guys all the time at that company, but they hadn't shot me for a buy scene yet. Um, and I said, yeah, but I want my two friends. And so these are friends of mine who I got to have a scene with. So we had way more fun and we ran it through totally organically. We just did whatever the fuck we wanted and they kept cameras on Yeah, us. you can tell. So those are the... Yeah, and you can tell, like, the, the people can see it. They're, they're like, oh, that that's so much fun. But they're, like, 
that, that's our rapport too. So that was kind of the best of all worlds converging where they're friends and we're working for a company that lets us do whatever we want. And then on the other hand, I've got the thing where they're like, Hey, we're booking you with this person. You're, uh, you're going to, your call time is some stupid fucking early thing. And you're going to have to do this stupid script. And I'm like, okay, that's my job. Yeah. As a performer. So how, how long does, uh, how long are you actually like for a, let's say that it's a, it's a 25 to 30 minute video that's going to go out. Um, of you, how long are you, or how many days, you know, hours, how long are you actually filming for that one 25 to 30 minute scene? Um, for the most part, like, so like a company like browsers will do like one scene a day. So it'll take them all day to do pictures and like get everything, do all the intro and stuff. And by all day, I mean, probably like eight in the morning to like five in the afternoon mm -hmm. to do like one scene. Some of them, like the one that the buy scene, and I'll just use that for reference cause you saw it. Um, I think they did like they filmed two or three scenes that day. So basically what you saw is what happened. Like, I don't think oh, cool. we did any. Action. Yeah. So it was just that. And that's why the, you, you can tell this have better energy. It feels really organic. Yeah. It, so, it, is, is it weird when people are like crowding around you um, with, with cameras and all that, or do you get used to it? Uh, porn runs kind of like a skeleton crew for the most part. So usually when we're filming, any superfluous people are sent out for that reason. Uh, it's mostly for the guys. It's mostly so that they don't lose their hormones. Because that was my that, They're the ones. <laughs> yeah, they're they're the ones who actually like they're the total unsung heroes because everybody pays attention to the women. But realistically, and this is why the, the bar was set so low for women for so long. Like any bitch can put some lube in her cunt and pretend to like it, and there you got a porno, right? <laughs> but the guy <laughs> or the they're the, the the shit. They're the ones who matter because they are the actual operating members and if they can't do their job and i'm talking in a boy girl scene or or, or the or guy gay guy scene um you know obviously the lesbian scenes have their own their own thing too the, and actually the lesbian scenes it's usually where they film the most content for what for some reason they'll shoot 45 minutes to an hour of sex for lesbian scenes and i think it's because they like to do a lot of close shots because the people who are fans of that work they want like a more sensual experience so they kind of draw yeah. it out whereas you know, like I've done gonzo scenes where literally I've showed up, makeup done, gotten on set, taken some pictures and shot a, a 25, 30 minute scene and only been on set for an hour and a half all day. Oh, wow. So that's, it just depends. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. That varies a lot. Huge, huge um, range. What, what, uh -huh. what are some of the ways that they they actually keep the, um, the guys ready for action? Because, I mean, that's got to be. I know probably the first time is the performance anxiety has got to creep in sometime. I mean, that happens with people who aren't doing porn. Yeah. It's well, this, that's why there's very few male performers and the few that there that are, they make less money than the women, but they work way more often. So let's say that they'll make on average a third to half of what we make a scene, but they'll work every day, sometimes twice a day. Um, they Viagra is used. Uh, they actually, a lot of these like new athletic scenes that you see, it's because we have access to Viagra. That's why you didn't see that stuff in the eighties. Um, there's also Cabraject. Some of the guys do that. Uh, it's a, it's an injection that you can use. I guess they use it for some sort of surgery, but it causes, it causes like a two hour erection. And then also there's a new uh, technology. It's a, it's a penis pump. So they put this, I don't know, like a, it's a pumping mechanism. It looks like another testicle. And with the testes and you pump it and it pumps the dick up. So that's, that's a new technology. It's, <laughs> Yeah, it's it just physically exhausting. I mean, just for the average Joe Smuckatelli like us, you know, having sex is it's 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 a it's a workload. It's a challenge half the time, especially as you get older. Oh, I couldn't even imagine having you're to not do doing it, it right. Uh, then, Steve. Get, Kyle, trust me, you'll get there. You'll get there. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine how much physical shape you have to be in in order to have that kind of grueling demand on you. Yeah, it's we're, I, and that's what I always tell people: we're really athletes. That's we're we're sex athletes, and I think that when you see girls burn out and have like a fucking meltdown about the industry, it's because they didn't understand that coming into it, we're performers primarily. So we're, it's more like a circus than it is like a TV show because we're doing athletics and we're doing them in weird ways. And there's risk associated with it. And people don't, you know, it's kind of like, like nobody looks up to carnies. Nobody looks up to, you know, porn stars. Yeah. It, it was, we take it, but, but, we're, but we're, Oh, there's a few, there's a few we, that I have. I, I, there's a few, there's a few stars out there that I've, uh, I've appreciated over the years for sure. Yeah, and, and but back and in my day, a lot of, I, back, back, 
but so you gotta remember back in my day, it was it was you had um, like what's called selecting on TV, right? And it was all scrambled, mm -hmm. and so you would have like a little analog thing. You, you would kind of tune it, so you get that little scrabble uh, scramble thing out of the way. You're like, that's yeah. a boob. That, that's a boob. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's that. That's yeah. how I started in the porn industry. Yeah. That's horrible. Yeah. Like I love. I'm not even that. kidding, Kyle. That's, that's a true story. Yeah. Um, se <laughs> sex athlete though, that, that's a uh, that's that's probably the coolest sounding uh, occupation that you can have though. I am a sex athlete. Yeah. I know. It's it, I love my gold medalist. My I actually. Yeah, I love I love my profession. I love the industry. I've come to love it more the longer I'm in it. Um, it's because it's it's such a fucking cool thing to do for a living. If you can keep your head on, you know. I think a lot of times when the girls burn out, they were either unwell to begin with which is common because again, we're telling people that this is where the dysfunction mill people go. So then you got sure. people who are fucked up. And so it's, this is, you know, feeding itself. And then also, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard for people to deal with like the fan element because it, the brain wants to focus on the 10 or 20% of shit as opposed to the 80 or 90% of great. You know, it's like, I'm sure you guys get all kinds of shit comments sometimes on, on YouTube. Whatever. Oh yeah. Just, that's, that's like, you know, and people are always, you can't have you seen our flat earth have you have you seen our flat earth videos the, the flat earthers no, no I, I... okay okay we'll we'll have to send you to them um yeah no we yeah. we actually have a wide variety of things that we do and one of the bigger things that we do for dumpster fires is we actually have flat earthers come on and try to argue for flat earth and they are nuts oh, no. they're psychotic and they've left the most ridiculous comments we've ever seen they're bizarre but people watch we're we're very yeah, hated. Yeah. anything to get. Yeah. You guys yeah, are very really part of the you're like part of the reptilian Illuminati overlord. Oh yeah, disinfo. Absolutely, yes, yes. Yeah. NASA pays us Shield. well to shill for them. Mm -hmm. Steve brought up a good yeah. point though. How has um, how, how have you seen uh, uh, porn change in terms of? Uh, I remember when I was I was just coming out of uh, I was in middle school and high school, and that was in the time of AOL. So you had dial up. You know, when it had that annoying noise that would, you know, play when you were trying to get on the internet. Twenty four to so you would literally, yeah. yeah, you literally wait for five minutes for one picture to pixelate across the screen, you know. And I remember doing looking up porn, waiting for that, you know, a boob to to pixelate across the screen. You see, you see the picture kind of like scan like this, you're like is that part of the areola? Yeah. Wait, wait, is that nipple? Now you yes! have it Score! everywhere. You have it everywhere you want it. So it's how ubiquitous. have you seen like yeah the the industry change and where is it going like what's the uh what's the next frontier in um and porn well um you, and so i wasn't around for this but i hear all the stories because anytime you're on a porn set with like and one of my good friends um mike quasar he's he's one of my favorite people of all time and he's a big deal director so he's been around forever my friend uh, david has been around since 87 so he's actually like got 30 years of tenure we talk about this the big, the thing that really affected the porn industry was the tube sites, and it was it was this the the inability of the industry to kind of work together to form some sort of coalition to keep content from being stolen. It's like like if you're if you make uh, mainstream Hollywood movies, there's a lot of protections there, so they they work with the government to block your access to, you know, I don't know whatever the latest fucking superhero movie is. You know, to download mm -hmm. online from some or Malta or whatever. Um, the industry didn't do that, and so the tube sites pretty much decimated them. Like Pornhub, X Hamster, all those sites that are now trying. What they did was they went in and they gutted everything. They stole all the content to the point the production companies were more or less bankrupt and then bought all of them. So now that company owns like eighty percent of the industry. And now they're learning that because they've stolen the content, and they've made it free. Now they can't make money on the on the right the scenes that they create. They're, and yeah. they're monetizing a lot of web traffic. That's more their probably thing. Um, but it's changed. That's why I said everything's SEO driven now. Everything is about your your SEO tags because it's all about how we can index that and make the most click. You know, the clicks. And um, and the social media has changed the perception too because back like. Vivid and a lot of those companies, they had big PR arms and they would put all the girls in contract and then you'd have somebody kind of babysat them. It was an intermediary between the fans and the girls, right? So that's why like AVN Expo existed and or exists. And it was a big deal back then and not so much now. 
uh, because it was your only way that you could meet some of these girls. If you wanted to meet Jenna, you had to go to the thing. Like you could send letters to Vivid and you'd probably get a response, but it was coming from some PR department, not Jenna herself. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I think, um, so it's, it, it's hurt the money though. The, like the money, the money's not there. There were people making just a fortune, putting really bad content online in the early days of the internet, just because it was porn and it was on the internet. That was enough to sell, yeah. you know? Uh, what what do you think about uh, the move into the uh, virtual reality porn? I, that seems so to be picking up. I've done, I've done about let's see, I want to say six or seven VR scenes. Um, oh, cool. I think that the problem, the limitation with it is like it would do better, and it probably there are probably uh, video games for this. I just don't know. I don't keep up on that. I should look it up. Uh, that do virtual reality like sex. I think that the scenes themselves haven't taken off because, first of all, I mean you've got to jerk off with a fucking helmet on your head. So that's unless you live alone, <laughs> that's kind of right? you're so totally immersed yeah. in your fucking whoever walk opens the door, you can't tell. Uh, so I think that's part of it, and I also think that because just of the nature of the scenes, it's not necessarily interactive. Like you're you're part of you're immersed in an experience that already happened, and you're replaying that, right? But when you film like a let's say an actress um, for a VR scene, what they do is they set the cameras up pretty much where the guy's head is, so he's either like laying flat or he's reclined in a chair or laying down or whatever, but he can't do anything. So the, the male performers are totally at our mercy. They can't do anything. They can't move because it like the person wearing the headset didn't move. You know what I mean? And then the it's how much can you do like with one person looking at a camera for 20, 30 minutes and do it yeah. the way they set it up. They'll do like five minutes. So like five minutes of reverse cowgirl. Well, you know, I gotta tell you, I mean, if you were doing that in real life, like that's pretty fucking boring. So I think it hasn't really <laughs> taken off. It's because it's because you're looking at somebody's back for five minutes, you know? Right. I mean, yeah, I don't think sense. that in watch porn, they would look for faces and, and cues. I mean, we're humans. We're adult. Like we're, we're animals. We're looking for those cues. And when you take those away and you actually, because this is the thing that, you know, feminist always so porn objectifies, but it really doesn't because when they did studies on it, they found that men overwhelmingly look at faces and micro expressions and other kind of social cues to see if they're doing a good job. Right. It's a, Hey, men want to do a good job. They're watching women going, hey, is, she, is she getting off on this? It actually, it was women who objectified breasts and penises and vaginas and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's, it's, it's actually I, the eyes that tell the story, right? I mean, when you're looking at the eyes, right. the eyes, most people look directly at the eyes. Um, but it's funny I, you mentioned that, um, that uh, I watched just recently Ready Player One. Have you seen that? Great movie, yeah. um, but it, and it has a lot of things about augmented reality, um, and I think that might be more of a wave of future than even virtual reality because people have these headsets, but it doesn't, it doesn't actually like remove all the rest of the surroundings. It just augments the existing reality. Uh, that might be, I think, a, a better way to go than, than you said. You, it may not be as immersive, but you're not disassociating yeah. yourself with reality entirely, where you have to like <laughs> sit there in this in this little encapsulated visor thing, you know. That's then that, see that makes a lot of sense and actually I'm surprised nobody's done that I might take that and run with it because that's exactly augmented what reality porn important. there you go there you go no it's it's really you could be you could be you could be you know you what you could be like one of those little um um like like little angels sitting in the little bottom of the, of the Google Glass or something you know that you know like yeah. you know how you you would you would say hey Alexa or hey um Siri or something like that you would you know say hey Mercedes and you'd pop up hey, Mercedes. The glass and you would, yeah hey Mercedes exactly see. It's brilliant. Do it. Take that, it. Run with it. I like that. Was, and, and that makes more sense because I think I think it's actually like, and then maybe that's what's always bothered me about it on a psychological level. It's kind of dissociative. Like I don't want to be in this room. I don't want to be where I'm at. I want to be in this other place with this other person. And it, and it, but it's not interactive. So it's kind of it's almost like being in a sensory deprivation chamber in a way because you don't have no control mm -hmm. of your you have no control over that environment, but you're choosing not to be in your current one. I, I don't. I think psychologically for me it doesn't work. But I don't have a penis, so I I don't stroke my dick to like porn like the same way i'll watch it but i don't have the same physiological cues so i don't know if some of the men who because it's mostly men who buy it i mean women don't buy virtual reality porn overwhelmingly that's true i, uh, what I do, i've what you, never tried it so i don't know <laughs> what do you uh, what do you say to people that might um say something like uh porn is harmful or you know there's that whole uh, group of people that they, they try to rally against porn because they claim that it's 
uh, it poisons the minds of uh, of kids growing. You know what I mean? Like, what, what do you say to that whole fuck em. arm of, uh, yeah, besides that? <laughs> You know, I and actually like I, so. I'm gonna. Say I actually don't disagree that porn should be behind pay sites. I actually think that the industry should be in with the religious right to have it as banned as possible because that's how I make the most money. Like the more contraband my work is, the more money I make. So that makes sense. That makes I, sense from your point of view, actually. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Ban it, like ban it all, like fucking put it behind all the pay sites, like make people make it made it very difficult to get to. Right. Okay. Yeah, because that's that's actually a, a better model. Part of the problem with the industry right now is that they're like they have this weird. They want to make money, but they also want porn to be everywhere. And I'm like, well, you can't do that because that's the scarcity model it still applies to this. So, um, I think that I think pornography can be an addiction, but I I think part of the reason for the addiction is actually an overarching social issue that we have right now, which is that I think. We have a society that, for all its technological progress, is exceedingly regressive when it comes to sex. May, and maybe even increasingly so, because if you look at, like, technologies and advanced, it's, it's like Demolition Man now. You know, people are going to put on the VR headsets in order to have sex. It's kind of a bizarre thing. It's like this weird neo-tech thing. And I think people feel very disassociated from their humanity or their animalness. So they're probably going to porn to look for that because of right. the condition of society. I don't think that I think anything can be a problem. I think you can you can overdrink water, you can overeat food, you can, you know, overuse any compound or whatever. Um I don't think they're wrong. I just think that they don't understand the why. So they're they're coming right. to a conclusion. They're saying that porn is is a problem for these people. Well, yes it is, but the reason for that is not the thing that you're saying. We don't need a return to biblical family values because look, things were fucked up back then. If you really read news reports from back in the day where they're, they're saying oh, they, everything was so great back in the day. It's like no, the world was not leave it to beaver at all. No, it was actually not at all. That was the image that they put forth. That was the, uh, the that was the varnish that they put on society, but yeah. if you look deeper beyond that varnish, that's not the way society actually was. That was all myth. And you're dead on. You're dead on. I think that it, it has a lot to do with the fact that people haven't embraced sexuality. They do it in private. I think to a certain extent, everybody is willing to uh, kind of search out or seek out their own sexuality. But they, for some reason, won't do that where it counts, which is out in the public. Like we're not open with sexual education in schools. We don't. We try our best to shield kids away from hearing uh, anything about sex and what that causes is uh, problems when the kids get older and they realize that, Hey, this is pretty fun and I haven't been exposed to it, you know, very long. So I'm just going to go crazy with it. Right. And, and also like without, you know, I mean, porn is not an instructional how to, it's like, like you're not going to watch evil can evil to learn how to ride a bicycle. You know what I mean? And it, so it's th the problem is that you, you have people, looking into pornography and saying, well, they need to educate. Well, there's actually instructive porn out there. There are, I've done some really good cool things. Lynn, Ginger Lynn taught me an awful lot back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Ginger Lynn's dope. I went on her oh. radio show. She's really cool. Oh, she's awesome. Yeah, she's super fun. She's such a cool chick. She's like, she's not talking about, <laughs> she's, she's talking about getting turned on watching this Japanese bukkake scene where they're coming with gallons <laughs> of semen and porn. The girl. <laughs> she, I mean, she does sex education now, though, doesn't she? I mean, that's kind of her shtick now. Is, is like, she's heavily involved in sex education, right? Yeah, her, her, and uh, Nina Hartley. Nina Hartley. There's a, uh -huh. there's a lot. Uh, Jessica Drake uh, with the Wicked Guide to Sex. That's a big, um, a big series. So they, they have it, and it's, a, and it's, it does exist. It's just that when you go to Pornhub, you're probably you're more likely to see Riley Reed taking like three dicks up her ass. You know what I mean? It's it's like so <laughs> it's all about what people. That's see. the most popular I video I think on Pornhub. Taken. Yeah, I can vouch for that. You see, yeah, because in his research this weekend, he's a big Riley Reed fan. <laughs> he came across. I love Riley. He's I'm just fantastic. I'm just a big porn fan. I'm just a big porn fan. I see, and I, I like porn too. It's like it's one of these things where I think if you watch it as entertainment, it's really cool because you actually get to see performers. One thing I love about porn is that unlike I me, mean, I hated being a mainstream model and actress. It's incredibly limiting, and you're it's totally stupid and I'm reading so many stupid words that they wrote and whatever. But with porn, they usually give us an intro, and then whatever in the scene is usually up to us, unless it's really, and usually it's not. So we can kind of take things how we want.
lot. And I love that about my profession is they give us still an opportunity. So we'll take, like, I did a scene yesterday with this girl. I was supposed to be a tennis coach for this girl. And we turned this into this really amazing scene because she, I was going to fuck her into being a champion. Right. So like I made her come and I'm like, <laughs> how bad, how bad, how bad does this fuck win? And I'm fucking, I'm fucking her. And she's like, yeah, fucking for the goal. Yeah. And it That's was, awesome. It was cool. They gave us kind of this, so you can get really creative if you, if you want to. Oh, and that's, that's what I do love. Yeah, it's cool. But, you know, I think it's, it's the, I think it's like anything. It's to be used in moderation. I don't think that that's the way to, to teach children. But if your fucking kids are watching porn, like, where the hell are you? Like, yeah, watch your kids. Really? I don't know what to tell That's them. a good point. That's a good point. I'm well, glad, it's, glad it's funny. that, that it's, it's a little bit more natural now because uh, gone are the days. Uh, it's, it's so crazy to go back and watch some of the vintage with the, oh, yeah. uh, the you know the cheesy intro lines like um, oh you've got my pizza do you need a tip you know what I mean like it's uh, extra pepperoni <laughs> it seems like now today you just it, it's a lot more just going straight into it which I like there's none of the 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 extra acting with it's a lot more reality that. right it's a lot more reality type like instead of like scripted yeah. than anything yeah, else. But as you, you know, you are talking earlier, there, there's a lot of porn stars that actually have degrees. I mean, very well-educated porn stars, people with my, degrees in microbiology, anthropology. Um, it, you, they're, they're very intelligent. And I've, I, I'm a sapiosexual, so I find that to be hot, right? If, if a woman's in, in a scene and she's talking science, oh. and happens to be hot and naked, what can go wrong, right? You're a what? Sapiosexual. If you don't know the word, you're not one. That's not That's a thing. Thumb. Yeah, save you. Stop. Yeah, no. It, yeah, no. It, <laughs> he thinks I make shit up. He literally thinks I make these words up on the floor. No, I think people. I think people make up too many words for things. Like, just they say just, I like having word. sex with people who are smart. You don't need a. a, a you don't have to even have sex with the same for everything. It's not what it, but sapiosexual doesn't mean you have to have uh, sex with them. Sapiosexual means you're attracted to intelligent whatever. people. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> See what I do with. Too? And I, but, yeah, I like safe. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's true. I think that inside in inside the industry, actually, we have we have stuff like that too. Where I like there's some of the performers that I really really gel with. That it's it's not about looks. Like I think we all kind of hold. I have we have to hold ourselves to a high standard because people want to you know see attractive people fucking. But um, it's not like. I don't think that's a definitive thing when it comes to say, if any, if my time in porn has taught me anything, it's all about like what's in people's brains and their energy. That's what makes people sexy, you know? But what's some of the nicest yeah. girls you've ever had to work with, if I can ask? Like you, like just actually nicest? sweet girls, nice. Uh, uh, Riley Reed is a sweetheart. Um, so she seems nice. happy about that. Um, yeah, she's wonderful. Um, God, there's so many. There's so many girls. My good friend Missy Martinez, one of the other Latin milfs. There's three Latin milfs: Ariella Ferrara, Missy Martinez, and myself. So that's it. We're it. We're the triune of of, of Latin milf made porn. <laughs> uh, but uh, Missy is a good friend. Of mine. She's fantastic. I mean, most of the girls are actually really great. I, like one cool thing about being kind of a disenfranchised class is that people end up, even if they get a little ego for a while, overall. And I got to tell you, actually, most of the people with shit personalities wash out really quick. So that makes that's sense. One though. thing that's I, it yeah, does make sense. Who wants to work with them if they're just nasty people, right? Yeah, and, and you'll see. Like I've mm. seen this, like not super recently, but kind of recently. Well, they'll push a girl really hard, um, but she's got a shit personality. So yeah, they might do that, but the rest of us are, are going to rebel. And go, I'm, I'm no listing that person. I'm not going to work with them. I don't care. So I'll do that. If I don't like somebody, I'm like, fuck you. I don't care how popular you are right now because I'll still be around three years from now and you'll be gone. I'll give you <laughs> So there you go. enough of us who go, I don't need to put up with your fucking bullshit to it make my, because I don't, I'm not going to too late. I always go, who's a bitch to me on set. I don't need to work with you again that bad. Yeah, and you do. You do have the sense. choice. You can blacklist certain people, right? You can say, "I just for what, and whatever reason, I don't want to work with that particular person." Yeah, and the only people it's funny because some of the girls, you know, like I said, there's there's still a lingering thing with the '90s where people want to like blacklist over crossovers or they work with transsexuals, or whatever. Um, but 
uh, the only people on my low list are people who I just don't like. <laughs> like they were assholes at some point. And I'm not willing to invest time in finding out if they're going to not be assholes the next time I work with them. Sure. That makes sense. Absolutely. Do you ever have any, uh, do you ever have any like awkward moments where it, the, like the chemistry is not right when you're filming a scene or like you may be just not into that other person? Um, I think at the point I'm at now, no, but earlier on, yes, I think you realize the possible. So part of your job as a performer is to make chemistry where there is none. So your job is to then every person you work with find what it is about them that you can connect with. And like I said, like the only people who are assholes are the ones who won't connect back. Like if they're not willing to engage in that with me, I cannot work with them because they're creating the self-limiting barrier around themselves. And so there's, we can't create anything good. Um, sure. But most people, especially most performers, they're, they, they want to do that. They want to be in their space and do what they're doing well. And so they're going to work together with whoever they're working with. So I, like, I work with a lot of, I worked with a young girl yesterday and she was like, I was so intimidated to work with you. And I, I think, well, I don't know why, but it's just cause I've been around for a while and I have a rep for being a pretty good actress. So, um, she was nervous, but she was so sweet. And, and like if people mess up a little bit or they're having a hard time because they're like nervous or they're confused, I think we all understand that. It's just a matter of, it's the ego. And I think the social media has created some of that too. There's a lot of like this, you guys see it, I'm sure. It's like social media likes and clicks and blah, 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 blah. And so people start to oh, believe yeah. their own bullshit. And Absolutely. like, you're not famous. Like, <laughs> like I'm nope. not famous. I don't how many people have jerked off to me. I'm not famous because when I walk down the street, I'm not being stopped all the time. It's probably good. You no, probably like that, true. though. Uh, I, I would like that fact <laughs> that I'm not, you know, constantly. You know, you're out there yeah. enough where people, that, that, you know, they appreciate your work, but they're not like clobbering you down the road or, or stalk. Do you get stalkers? That's a good question. Do you get people that, that just have an unhealthy obsession with you? I don't, but I have, I'm, I'm known to have a lot of guns. So I'm kind of like fucking, like I grew up in a military household. Like I have a gun next to my bed. Like fuck with me. Like, oh, let's see who's a better shot. I'm going to bet I'm a better shot. I don't But, but it's still nice to have a fan base, right? But I love my fans. See, I have great fans. Mm -hmm. I see, and I don't have. I, I hear this from other girls. I think that people kind of create or generate a lot of what they are, you, whatever you put out, right? So if you put out a lot of shit, you're gonna get a lot of shit. Or I'm very careful with the scenes I do. I don't do scenes that are like snuff scenes or anything like that because I don't like that fan base. So yeah. I don't want a fans who want to see me get killed. <laughs> that's right. That, yeah. that, I mean, that's a, you know, most of the girls right. I know who've had serious do those kinds of scenes. Because you're dealing with people who are mentally unwell. I, you know, it's not normal sense. to want to see people like it's uh, the, and while they're having sex. It's a bizarre thing. So I do really, I stay with like really vanilla and like the, the scenes that people like people consider the fact that I do bi scenes and trans sex scenes to be like, oh, it's so like uh, outside of the typical rules. But then on the other hand, a lot of the girls who will do that will do a snuff scene or something, a torture type scene. That is bizarre. It, it makes sense. That is bizarre. Yeah. So I have great fans. My fans are fucking fantastic. I love my fans. They're really good people. And um, some of them are really supportive. I get to know a lot of them really well. And I like talking to people. I'm interested in who they are, what they're doing, and why. And yeah. why they follow me. Because it's cool. You know, it's, to me, it's so neat. <laughs> Somebody's going to actually meet me and say, hey, I watched your, your porn scene. I'm like, that's fucking cool. Well, that you're good. I mean, uh, this is why you're, uh, you, I think you're fantastic. Uh, for all of those reasons and for like for being able to to get out there and you know answer these questions and not i guess close yourself off and and feel like what well, you know i'm not going to interact and it's, it's cool to see people um do that especially when you watch them when you watch them on that level you know there's something very intimate about uh you know i mean i'm sure you you get this all the time people uh, everybody seeing you naked you know that's got it to on, on some level be very like steve said earlier um empowering but um how does uh the net neutrality issue affect the porn industry and um because you, you're a big ad advocate for that well so i and what happened was actually with net neutrality i um so i got pulled into the funny or die thing about it because mm -hmm. all of us really were concerned that right <clears throat> the there are still pay sites in porn and people who are hardcore fans will still sign up for those sites because then you get like 
like the four, you get the extras and you can read forums and stuff like that. So, and, you know, honestly, I, it's like anything. I think if you really like something, spending 10 bucks a month or whatever for it is probably money well spent. So those companies still rely on kind of a free and equal internet and to, in order to deliver content. And so if you were going to see, like, for example, ISPs start to prioritize um, Netflix and then deprioritize pornography as some sort of punitive measure or just because they're not willing to play ball and pay for the, the rate is in order to prioritize their content. A lot of those companies are, are the holdouts against the, the tube sites are going to go under. And so I think the real concern in the industry, and this is kind of on this was what happens when if 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 that goes away if we don't have kind of equality on the internet what you're going to be left with is just tube sites for porn everything else is going to go like i mean it'll almost be like a secondary deep web type of thing because it won't because a lot of it doesn't get indexed either they've, they've kind of pushed a lot of porn off of that and uh, porn is it's a it's a societal necessity People have drawn dicks on everything since time immemorial. I mean, this is part of the human psyche. I mean, the Navy the other day, I'm sure you appreciate this. I mean, Navy uh, drew a dick in the sky with a fighter jet because it's because it's the Navy. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot yes. of things that go on in the Navy we don't talk about. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I have no doubt. Yeah, and I, and I have uh, I'm not even exaggerating. I'm. I, I mean, there's some things we just don't talk about. What's that? <laughs> Yeah, Sorry, that's, we have a little bit of a, a lacquer with that. Yeah, that's and it, like, look, people have people are like this is what people do. I mean, with our, what is that one um, temple? I have a book on it. it was in, is it in India? I think where they've got the sex. They, it's, it's an ancient temple. It's like with these huge carvings of like DPs and oh yeah, it's all over this. Well, it's like five thousand. I hate to tell, hate to, tell people. to people, but sex has been around a very long time. Um, I, yeah. I, I literally, as long as people have been around, it's been around. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that I think one thing that probably is unnerving to people about porn right now, and I do have kind of my theories on this, but I think it's that historically when you saw sexual uh, societies or uh, cultures, it was tied in with fertility, and because we've decoupled fertility with sex, I think that that's why like the religious right and a lot of people who are kind of traditionalists really have a hard time with it because it's hard for them to for their psyche to understand how to decouple those. And I think so. You're, you're, that's where people, like, especially feminists, they don't know what to do with this. And I have a lot of theories about how women are interacting with the world right now, anyway, because even like like a lot of the hormonal contraceptives change how women perceive um, men and sex and stuff like that, which makes sense because like like birth control pills put you in the first trimester of pregnancy artificially. That's what they do, and most of the time, you know, the female body goes into self protection. So we have a society right now that's post-hormonal contraceptive. We have a lot of medical interventions that we make to ourselves, but our sex drive is still there. How do we reconcile that? And I, so I think there's kind of a bigger question about that. And I don't think anyone's really addressing it. You have the camp saying, hey, sex is good and normal and porn is great. But there is the other side where I understand why these people are having their moral panics, even though I think they're misguided. I, um, I actually saw a, I'm trying to find it now, um, saw a article from the uh let me see if i can find this real quick from the friendly atheist on patheos and oh where can i find this at uh shannon actually a good friend of ours shannon retweeted it. i can't find it right now but anyway the the title of the um the article was it was this woman in front of the she's in, she's in the church I think but she was in front of the congregation and she was saying that only um, only or straight people don't give blowjobs or have oral sex straight people don't have oral or anal sex I think was what she was saying so she was in front of this congregation making a claim that it's a I guess something brought on by the the lgbtq community this whole epidemic of oral and uh, and anal sex which i think is a good epidemic to have if you're going to have it but that's the mindset you know the, the religious the religious right is they're deeming these to be um you know a community only issue and the only thing that i have to say to her is i feel very bad for her husband like that guy her name is linda harvey miserable kyle you're thinking oh, of linda harvey 
Wow. Okay, I didn't know her she, name. Yeah, she's the founder of Mission America. Yeah. Oh God. Well, see, and this is that's like you know, it's so this is like that horseshoe where the religious right and the and the uber feminist anti porn are pretty much the same. Like if you look at like Gail Dines and a lot of those anti porn feminists, they could be in a church somewhere, even though a lot of them are academics and they're atheists themselves. So that's why I said I think they're kind of they're trying to figure out how how to put themselves in this world because one thing that I think is unnerving for a lot of women, and this is where you see a lot of anti-gay hysteria, is if you have men who have higher sex drives just in general because of testosterone and you know physiology, and then they're all able, everyone's able to blow each other, fuck each other up the ass. And what purpose do women have? So I think a lot of this. The feminist hysteria is them going but what do we do and, and we how come we don't we don't get our protected status anymore because you, they're not they don't have a, a purpose the same way you don't you don't sure. have lots of children arm going so now these women are like oh shit you mean i have to be a a valuable contributing member of society and also be in some way um psychologically or intellectually compelling for men to want to stay with me oh no but i have a vagina that should be enough Oh, that's kind of like usually enough for me. <laughs> the the problem is though that there's enough there's enough room for both. Like it doesn't have to be an all or nothing. There are plenty of of, of guys that like guys and you know having sex with guys, and there are plenty of guys who don't who want you know just to be with women. The there's a false like hysteria created between these extreme sides. They think that it's all or nothing. Like you can't share this planet with gay people and straight people because both groups do exist. I mean, they do exist. Absolutely. A lot of times they're the same person. I mean, cause I like all go from like doing a totally lesbian scene one day. And a lot of times they bring me to dominant kind of like little dykey. So like the next day I'm doing some thing where I'm being tossed around with some dude. It's like, that's, we all exist. Like that's, that's the cool part of living is we get to expand ourselves to be anything and everything we want to be that's within our reach. So right. why is, but, you know, people who, who don't want to do that or that's why you see like women who are religious right or women who are super feminist or like, oh, God, no, we can't do that because it's, it's laziness. To be frank, it's, it's just intellectual laziness and it's an inability and an unwillingness to be great enough to be compelling on their own. Like if you if somebody's with you just for the blowjobs, like do better, bring more to the table. Because they're going to leave. If sex is the only thing that you have as a linchpin in, in your relationship, and that's what most women were taught. You know, the Victorian era kind of cemented that, that women think that offer, here, you give me love and resources and I give you sex. That's the transaction, right? But in yep. this modern society. There's a societal, there's a societal contract between them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 it, and that's unfair. That's unfair to men. But men were willing to do it because they needed lots of farm hands, you know? So it makes sense <laughs> why people did but right now we're in kind of like a neo like a neo hunter gatherer society most of us live in cities and we go hunt and forage for shit you know we don't need a lot of offspring so then you know women have to find their place again okay well if we're not broodmares then what are we and how are we contributing to society as a whole and so that's where you see a lot of women driving that and then also you see it with same with the religious right a lot of those guys you know they're either repressed they're they have homosexual desires they don't want to acknowledge you know that's a big huge part of the religious right Huge. So Cute. every time you see Cute. guys, like, they catch them. It's like they're with a, with a transsexual, um, you know, prostitute doing methamphetamine. It's like that focus on the Family Guy. What was his name? Ted Haggard. Yeah, it doesn't even phase uh, anybody anymore, does it? Yeah, yeah. Does it even phase anymore when when some religious right advocate that's always been talking about being anti-gay gets you know found to have a training in a bathroom? It doesn't even phase anybody anymore. It's like it's I almost like more. Of... It, it's more. It's more astounding when you find somebody that's actually not had a sexual scandal. You know, of some kind. We're an we're an athe we're an atheist channel here, and so we deal a lot with um, mostly religious uh, arguments back and forth. And I know quite a few that, uh, you know, in my not only my personal life with the church that I used to go to, I know quite a few that aren't so. Um, what's the word? <sighs> Pearly white, we'll say. He's corrupted yeah. a few people, is what he's trying to tell you. Yeah. I, well, I mean, and, and, yep. Yep. Because 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 porn actresses get a lot of those people too. It's amazing. I can imagine. Like, look, this this is why, like you know, they're trying to get Trump on on the stormy thing, and I don't think anybody was surprised by Trump fucking porn stars. I mean, the guy had like was the no. Miss USA pageant. Shock. So I, I 
Except yeah, his I mean, wife. Was, I think I she looked like she was surprised, but. Yeah, no. but I think he, was, he wasn't a model and she was, rumored, she was rumored to be an escort or something back in Eastern Europe. I don't know. She's gorgeous. In Russia. I mean, she's, she's gorgeous. Oh, she's but, really gorgeous. But, yeah. Gorgeous. But, um, I mean, Trump was a was he was a Democrat till two thousand nine. I, I I don't like I've never held Donald Trump to some moral standard. You know, like it no. doesn't. He's never, right. He's not. So, uh, but you know, like a lot of those those people, a lot of the celebrities too, who, that we get to know, and you know exactly what's going on. Charlie Sheen was one of them. But uh, you know, I and I don't believe in judging people for what they do in their personal lives as long as they haven't enacted judgment on other people. Like I, as long sure. as, as you know. As long as children and animals aren't harmed, I don't give a fuck what people do. Like I'm a pure liberal. That's a good point. That's that's our philosophy here. Uh, Charlie you're Sheen consenting sounds, seems fun. I party Charlie with him. Sheen's, yeah, seems like he'd be fun to hang out with. I, I've heard he's a lot of fun. I I know a lot of people who know him. I've never met him, but he seems. Yeah, and, and I think that that's like, it's all sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Every single religion, every single society throughout history, every secret society, every. Uh, you know, closed group that goes on the top of a pyramid and cuts the hearts out of virgins every, you know, eclipse and fucking tumbles their body. It's all sex, drugs, and rock and roll. At the base of that, there's some shamanic ritual and everyone's doing cocaine and fucking each other. That's the truth. And religion right now is trying to pretend that that's not the case because they're trying to impose some sort of social order. I understand why they're doing it because they're, they're social control freaks, but they just don't know how to like order themselves in their mind to like let go of the fact that, hey, you know what? This all exists out in the world, every variety of it. And sometimes you just got to let it go, Ch curate your own fucking experience. But you, you reading uh, to me from some book that was written and rewritten at the Council of Nicaea is not going to change my fucking mind. Do better. Produce a better you book. You're my new hero. <laughs> you are my new hero. Uh, we, we need, that's what we, we, what we need to do is do a poster of Mercedes and the words do better at the very bottom. That's hashtag do can, better. Kyle, can, can she be the non secretary official porn star? Your <laughs> official one. Yeah, totally, totally. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. This was fantastic. I like that. Uh, Steve, do you have uh, anything else you want to? Uh, I, I want to save. Uh, I'm hoping that Mercedes agrees to come back if her schedule allows in October, yeah. so we can actually do this in front of a live. Because I know people will want to ask so many questions, and we want to do that. Um, so I want to save a little bit for that, Steve. But uh, do you have anything else you want to um, ask? No, I just want. I just wanted to honestly. I just want to honestly thank her for coming on and, and joining the non sequitur show. I mean, we've been, we've been reaching out to her on Facebook and she was so polite, so nice and so sweet. And just said, you know what? I love to do that. And we love when we have guests that are enthusiastic and, and want to talk to people. And it, we, we, we find that to be what we built our brand on, right? We, we go out there, we put our face out there, we talk to people and we associate with the fans. You seem to have the same model. And I think that's why we, we picked you and said, this is the person that want that we want to have on to talk about these topics. And it's unfortunate because of the strike that we weren't having a live audience, but next time we will. Um, and maybe you can bring maybe a friend or something. There's a few, like I said, there's a few yeah. that I actually wouldn't mind bringing on, you know, make a, maybe like a Piper Perry or something. Oh gosh, <laughs> Steve, behave. Hey, well, That's throw it out there. Hey, come on. You talked about your buy scenes for a while, Kyle. I mean, I have some, some lesbians that I actually. I love you know, Piper. I, I did a girl's way scene with Piper. She's so I know. Small. Oh. She's like, she's so cute. She's I do know about that scene. <laughs> did you see that scene? Because like she was, she was. It was so great. Who was with whales? She was like, she's licking mona whales, and I fucking like because we're just we're busy literally just trying to find shit to do because we've done every scene like like every thing a million times. So how do you make it different, right? And usually it's like the performers. <laughs> so I'm using her head and like a strap on a fucking mona whale's face. <laughs> She's so small. Like I had been picking her up. I know she's <laughs> she is pretty she is pretty st small. I gotta admit, but she seems like she'd be like a a fun spinner type, just just bubbly and. Yeah. I love her. I I love her. It's a good choice. She's a sweetheart of a girl. She's so cute, and so I I don't know she's I don't know that she's LA local, but if you send me other um, uh, people that you like, I can always see. And then if not, like I could probably get one of my good friends. My friend Missy Martinez is hilarious. You want a good follow on twitter uh i think it's missy x martinez she's a comedian she's so funny I'm like probably one of the awesome. smartest people i've ever met. yeah you guys really like her she's awesome uh, well let everybody know before we close out uh where they can follow you and where they can see your work if you have a website uh, that sort of thing just where because i know people will get you out after uh after yeah, where they can find you, you guys can find 
Yeah, you guys can find me on Twitter at the Mercedes XXX, on Instagram at Based Milf, B A S E D M I L F, and also, uh, oh, my website, it's operationmilf.com. It's it's down right now, but I actually I have a project where I uh, have sex with all amateur male talent that are US military veterans. So that's what Operation Milf is. Operation Military, I'd like to fuck. <laughs> that's my that's my own little project. God bless that's America. Just I got... Yeah, I, yeah. Love, I love those guys. And I get emails from them. They, they all get out and they're like, what do I do? And I'm like, yeah. and I was like, how do I fuck that guy legally? And I was like, I know. I'll just have You're him the... to Because like, if I don't have him <laughs> that test, is awesome. I, ha- I didn't fuck him if, I, if they're not tested. So then I was like, well, we can just do scenes. So, yeah, so I've done like 10 so far, but it's been a really slow moving project. So it's hard to find a home for that kind of content because it's totally out of yeah. the ordinary. Because I don't want to do like, right. that is all the same kind of scenes be on Pornhub. Like, why? Yeah, that's a good point. That is the coolest. That's the coolest um, philanthropy I have ever heard of. Good for you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Sure. So if you, have, if you want to come, uh, come Operation Milf, let me know. Too. Excellent. Steve's going to be signing up right after we close out the show. I'm like, oh, you know what? I'll do another six year stint in the Navy for that. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. Uh, well, well, thank you once again, Mercedes, for joining us. Guys, um, hopefully, the next time you see us, we will have that content strike uh, situated. And um, we're going to start tonight calling them to get that removed. Hopefully, that'll be resolved. And we'll see you at uh, eight o'clock Eastern on. Um, Tuesday. If not, our schedule will be as is uh, you saw on the bottom of your screen in between me and Steve. Those will be the days that we will uh, change the the schedule up. So um, big thanks to uh, Mercedes. Um, keep doing what you're doing, please. It's uh, fantastic. And we loved having you uh, here. This was probably one of my favorite shows that we've done. Fun. So uh, fantastic. This was, this was really fun. Thank you so much. I look forward to coming back in October. So let's set that up. Thank you for having Excellent. me. Thanks all. Sure thing. Appreciate you guys. Sure. Go Bye, subscribe guys. to her on Twitter, guys and girls. Yes. And Bye. others. Non sequitur. Your facts are uncoordinated.